Hello everybody. Well, we went shopping and we got a couple of the components that we're going to need to put our forge together. So this is pretty much the nuts and bolts of the operation. Once again, let me say, guys, this is at your own risk. I don't want anybody sending me a nasty email saying that you blew yourself up with this stuff. Like I said, this is for your education. Use it at your own risk. So, having said all that nice fruit fruit stuff to keep me from being sued, I'm going to show you how to put together your first forge. It's real easy. It's not a problem at all. The first thing that you're going to need to do is you're going to need to go down to your hardware store. And you're looking for two inch pipe fittings. Now there's a collection of them here. Um, you're going to need a couple different pieces. This is a two inch flange, a two inch T-joint, a two inch cap, a couple of threaded nipples, and this one needs to be a little longer. Now you're going to actually need three pieces of threaded nipple all together, but you need to have one piece that's going to be at least a foot or two foot in length. Now you can go to any large retailer uh, and get these guys. Now they're about three four bucks a pop, so all together you're going to spend about twenty twenty five dollars on these pipe fittings. Uh, but once you have them, uh, you're good to go. Now here's what you do with your pipe fittings. What you want to build is something that's going to look like this. You have a pipe fitting that goes from the top of the T. One that goes in the bottom of the T. And now the long one, like I said, you want this piece to be either one foot or two foot long depending on how you're going to build it. It goes in the side like this. Your flange is going to go on top. Congratulations, you have just built now what is called duck pot. Duck pot is the portion that goes under the fire itself. Now, you can also take a cap that goes on the bottom side. This is going to be how you clean your fire out. Screw that bad boy in. And that's your assembly. That's pretty much all that you need for the duck pot. Now, the deal is you've got to have what's known as a fire pot. And now you're going to have to go to the junkyard for this. You're looking for one of two things. You're either looking for a brake rotor or a brake drum. Now, for those of you who have no idea what they are, if you'll ask one of the technicians, they can point it out. This guy is a used brake rotor. Now, if you try to buy one of these new, depending on the model of car that you're buying it for, it's going to cost you 50, 60, maybe even 100 bucks, depending on the model. If you go out back where they throw them away, it will cost you nothing. Brake rotor, this is like what stops the cars, but you can see it's kind of worn thin, this has been replaced, but this is what's going to act as your fire pot. So what you do, is what you're looking for is when you go out looking uh, in the junkyard, take your flange with you. So that when you're walking, there's going to be a pile of these things. There's all different makes and all different models of these brake rotors. So what you're looking for is a flange they will actually match up with the hole pattern that's already in the rotor. It's going to save you some drilling. Now if you can't find one that matches up, no problem, don't worry about it. What you can do is you can take the flange, put it on top of the brake rotor, and simply mark on the flange and drill the flange to match the brake rotor. You're not going to be able to drill the brake rotor to match the flange. So make sure uh, that you find something that will fit over that lip. Let's put all this together here, put the flange back on, need a couple of bolts. I have uh, some 5 16 bolts here, these are just standard, they don't need to be anything fancy. Uh, all they need to do is be able to reach through the brake rotor and fit onto the flange, that's all. Now I'm only going to put two on here, now you're probably going to want to put a few more. But the whole idea is just to hold it in place. Sometimes it will or will not fit with the washer. So just keep an open mind. There's one. Let's pop our second one in place. Just like so. Let another bolt go. There it is. I'm just going to finger tighten this down. Once again, this is for demonstration purposes only. And voila, 
That is your fire pot. Um, quite literally, all you need is some cinder blocks now, and I'll show you how to do that. Just set it up there. And that pretty much is your fire pot. This area right here is where you put your fuel. It's stout enough to take the heat, and you'll have plenty of airflow. Now, airflow. Where are you going to get your air? Well, once again, no problem. Remember now that I told you that this piece probably needs to be a little bit longer. Uh, get a one foot or a two foot section because then all that you do is you take your air supply. It's going to be your hair dryer here. Now, very simply, how do you attach it? Well, I'm glad that you asked. Super old duct tape. All you have to do is grab a little bit of duct tape and if your pipe is long enough so it's away from the heat, you can tape this bad boy on. Now, the only trick with this is that if the heating element gets hot enough, it will melt your tape away. So you can use uh, tin foil to cover it in, anything you need to do. A lot of beginning smiths take the opportunity to rip the heating element out of the hair dryer. That way you get a cold blast instead of that hot blast, which is fine. So we're going to do something just really, uh, here we go. Bam, there's your, there's your air source. Now all you need is a couple of cinder blocks to set this bad boy up on, and you have a working forge. Now once again, this guy is, a, is kind of a get-by situation. We can plug it in and it will work. Now to get you started, I mean, it doesn't get much more simple than that. You're talking spending 30 minutes in the junkyard and 30 minutes to go down to the store to buy your parts and you're out 25, 30 bucks. Now, I would like to say, however, in the process of you running down the store, pick you up a small fire extinguisher. It never hurts to have one of these in hand. These are, like I said, these are 20 or 30 dollars. Uh, and they're handy to have. Uh, depending on where you live, it's just a good idea to have it. The fire gets out of hand, have a way to put it out that's more than trying to uh, splash water on it from the kitchen sink. Well, what I'm going to do now is we're going to uh, pop this up on some blocks, and I'm probably going to actually put this bad boy to work for a little while. But what you got is your first forge. Set that bad boy on some cinder blocks, turn her on, and you're going to be burning. And that's your basic forge. Now, once again, Depending on what you find and some of the junk that you uh, that you dig up, you may change it just a little bit. That's fine. Remember, there's several ways to skin a cat. One of the things that you might want to add to it a little later is going to be a table, but we'll get into that when we upgrade a bit. Outside of that, everyone, that's how you build your basic forge. Hey guys, just want to throw in a couple of final notes. First of all, if you'll notice that these pipe fittings are actually galvanized. The local store was out of black iron. So let me say again, use black iron parts. If you don't know the difference, the guy at the store will. Galvanized when it's heated will give off some nasty stuff and you don't want to be around it. The other thing that I want to say is just remember to make sure that your intake pipe there on your left is going to be long enough to remove that hair dryer from the heat. The other thing is, is uh, you're going to want to put a little something over the hole in the bottom of the fire pot. It can be a piece of metal, just a little flat bar, just so that the fuel doesn't fall out of the fire. So that's it, guys. Let's get on to our outro and go from there. All right, everybody. So that's pretty much it. Uh, it's kind of a anticlimactic, all the talking about it and forges in general, and then boom, there it is. But that's the idea. You should be able to spend a couple of hours on any Sunday and put together a forge that will work. That forge is uh, almost exactly like the first forge that I had, except the, instead of using the brake rotor, I had a brake drum, all of which works. All you need is a pot. Don't overcomplicate it. So that's going to be your forge, and once you put a little bottom piece in there to keep most of the fire from falling through, you're ready to go. Well, that's going to be the forge demonstration, but before I go, once again, let me stress safety. If you're out digging around in a junkyard, put a pair of gloves on. Put a pair of glasses on. Uh, you know, it may, uh, it may take you five seconds to whip out a pair of safety glasses, but it will save your vision for the rest of your life. Now, there's nothing dangerous about putting this forge together. Uh, you know, the most dangerous thing about it is duct tape. So, but even so, keep your head about you. There's a reason that they came up with the Darwin Awards. But outside of that, guys, I'm going to have some more videos on now how to make your fuel. Since you've got a forge, you've got to power it. And so we're going to talk about charcoal, we're going to talk about coal, and uh, whatever else you can put in there to burn to heat up a piece of metal. Outside of that, guys, I'm really glad that you watched the video, and I'll have more coming soon. Thank you, guys. From Purgatory Ironworks, I'm Trenton Tye.